Something I've never understood about the urgency some theists place on conversion, on being saved, is that they are acting as though there is a time limit. They are acting as though if there is a god and an afterlife, it would be too late to become a Christian after you're dead. Why would this be the case? If the Christians are right and you don't really need to do good things to get into heaven, you just need to accept Jesus as your savior, why can't this be done after you're dead? If you're an atheist and you die and discover that there is an afterlife and there is a god and a heaven, etc., why would you not be able to say, whoops, my mistake, I'll happily convert to whatever religion is the right one now? Blaise Pascal said that you ought to convert to a religion before death, because if you don't, and you're wrong, not only would you miss out on heaven, you would miss out on the awesomeness of Christian life. He says, now what do we gain by hearing it said of a man that he has now thrown off the yoke, that he does not believe there is a God who watches our actions, that he considers himself the sole master of his conduct, and that he thinks he is accountable for it only to himself. Does he think that he has thus brought us to have henceforth complete confidence in him, and to look to him for consolation, advice, and help in every need of life? Do they profess to have delighted us by telling us that they hold our soul to only be a little wind and smoke, especially by telling us this in a haughty and self-satisfied tone of voice? Is this a thing to say gaily? Is it not, on the contrary, a thing to say sadly as the saddest thing in the world? This is, in part, a straw man of the atheist position. We may not believe that we are accountable to a god, but that does not mean we believe we are accountable only to ourselves. Whether there is a god or not, we are subject to the rewards and punishments of the communities in which we live, and are, in that sense, accountable to them. This is also something of a subjective judgment. I see nothing sad about the idea that we don't have an eternal soul, or the idea that there is no celestial dictator watching our every move and every thought, and passing judgment upon them. I don't think I would enjoy Christian life. And even if I did, I wouldn't need to try to convince myself that a god exists in order to partake in it. I don't need to believe in Yahweh to attend a lecture every Sunday, or dress like a Romney, or go door-to-door -door irritating the shit out of people. If those things made me happy, I'd do them whether I believed in a god or not. There are, in fact, atheists who still go to church and follow the rituals of Christianity because they enjoy them. Since they don't really appeal to me, I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything by living my life without them and without the belief in a god. Apologists also sometimes argue that when God sends people to hell, he's simply doing it so as to not force his presence upon people who don't want to be near him. In eternity, you're going to be with him or you're not going to be with him. Right? That's logically the only two options. If you want to be with him, you will seek him out and be with him. If you don't want to be with him, God will not force you into his presence against your will. This makes it sound as though hell is just a place where you don't have to put up with Yahweh's narcissism. It's just a place where God is absent. If that's what hell is, why should any anti-theist seek salvation? Why should any anti-theist fear hell? 